All right. So this is uh, another D and D video cast mm-hmm. with Brandy and Tom of Random Tandem. Uh, this will be the first and probably almost only <laughs> video cast about D and D encounters, uh, secrets of the Elder Elemental Eye. Yeah, something like that. Which has been the most recent one. Mm-hmm. Um, are you blogging while we do this? No, I have the blog up so I can remember oh. stuff. Okay. So yeah, we procrastinated. Uh, we're we're almost we're tonight will be the second to the last video cast. So this will be covering all of it so far. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll probably just do one more grand finale one in, in the week that uh, that the sessions end for this time around. Because we procrastinate. Yes, I'm very good at that. I found out. Is that an echo? <laughs> procrastinate. Anyway, so um, what has happened? What has happened? <laughs> Refresh me. Okay, so in the beginning. Do we, Okay. In the beginning. Start at the beginning. Session session one. Uh, session one. This time around, it. there was not a character building session. There was no session zero for character building. So well, you, technically there was, but uh, nobody was really there. Yeah, we kind of everybody skipped it because we we play with a group of guys who all know each other. The elder heroes of the elemental chaos. Yeah, chaos. but it, there it is. Elder yes. Elemental Eye. Yeah. Is the name of this one, and the book is Heroes of the Elemental Chaos. Yes. Because every D&D Encounters, for those of you who haven't been with us for the other videos, every D&D Encounters starts off with a book that's being released. And the book uh, basically just sets down the new classes and races that are going to be played in this particular encounter. Higher, because you gesticulate, Why? and only I can see them. <laughs> I'm not, I, I don't need this. This is unnecessary. Jazz hands? Jazz hands, jazz hands. <laughs> if I move it back further, will you be satisfied? Still can't see your hands because they're like under the table. There. Uh, nobody needs to see my belly. Hey, now. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, I'm not making one of those videos. Uh. Uh-uh. Okay. So, uh, okay. So each each D and D encounter starts off with a book uh, that's released on the same day that the, those encounters begin. That se- season. Season? S- season of encounters uh, begins. And so so you have the book there, and basically night one is where you create your characters, hopefully using some of the races and classes that are introduced in this new book. Mm-hmm. And then for the next 12 to 14 weeks, mm-hmm. you play with those new characters on this mission that's provided at the, your local game store. And like This time around, they had like a few new like classes and... Yes, let me I get my characters tome. Characters in, like the Genasi and the Elementalist, which gave you bonuses for using those guys because a lot of the tome games, Tom tome, um, were based off of like different elements, and so having yes. like the Sorcerer and the Elementalist, whatever, and the Genasi gave you like kind of extra bonuses for trying to fight off some of the bad dudes. Let's read, children. Let's read from the Heroes of the Elemental Chaos. This chapter... No, let's not read. No. So you have a whole bunch of new um, themes, like the Firecrafter, which I believe is one that I went with because they have the ability to explode if they're hit. Now, each book generally presents a variety of themes... And classes and races. So this time we got a bunch of themes related to um, related to elements. Yep. So water shaper, fire shaper, that sort of thing. Uh, new classes are basically just additions to existing classes. So you have a new type of druid. Um, I believe the monk was in this. Mm-hmm. Yep, the monk, uh, who works mostly with psionic powers, but in this case uses a little bit of elements. And the one that we both went with is a elemental sorcerer. Now, Sorcerer is actually a uh, class that exists in other D&D products, but the Elementalist is new to this one. And basically, the and new... so is Genasi. Yes, Genasi is the new class, or the new race uh, mm-hmm. presented in this, and they're basically born of the elements. Mm-hmm. So they all have some sort of element that they are related to. Yeah. Um, and of course, the elements are, you know, earth, fire, water, wind. Uh, everybody remembers Captain Planet. <laughs> Air, fire, water. Yeah, there we go. 
Well done. Thank you. Um, so yeah, uh, we both played sorcerers, and actually you get bonuses for playing... Uh, the entire thing, D&D Encounters, works with um, renown points. At the end of every session, you get renown points, and as you go through, you get rewards for getting certain levels, uh, which usually takes the, pl it usually takes the um, form of... Uh, let's redo that part. Usually takes the form of cards that you can play with throughout the game. You have these things called fortune cards, which, if you can find them, uh, not that many stores carry them lately. But if you can find them, uh, they give little bonuses throughout the game to your characters. Still with me? Mm-hmm. Okay, you just kind of <laughs> Wait, you, you, okay. you get a new one for every, like, so many renowned points. Yeah, I believe it's multiples of 20. Yeah, so like 20, 40, and then 60. Yep. So that's basically how Encounters runs. And uh, we both played Sorcerers because we got bonuses for them and because it turns out they're pretty awesome. And you went with a Genasi. Mm -hmm. And I went with a Tiefling. Uh, now, the cool thing about Sorcerers is they get the ability to sort of ramp up their powers. Um, you have uh, an at-will power, which in D&D &D you have a variety of different types of powers, but you have um, at-wills, encounters, and dailies, which basically determines how many times you can use them. A daily can be used once per game day. Um, an encounter can be used once per battle, and an at-will can be used as many times in a battle as you desire, or as many times in a game day. So uh, you have a basic at-will power, which is just sort of an a energy bolt. And then you can increase that, which it's related to the type of element that you decide to make your sorcerer. Mm -hmm. And you can increase that by ramping it up with your elemental escalation. So you, you almost always get to include more characters, more enemies into your attack. But oftentimes you get to do special abilities to them as well, mm -hmm. or ramp up your, your uh, damage. For instance, as a fire elementalist, uh, if you balance it right, you can end up doing... I mean, if you can max out your damage, it's about a maximum of 36 points damage in a round, which is pretty awesome when you really think about it. I mean, that's that's bloodying a guy that's killing any minion. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a pretty nice character to play if you if you're into strikers. Mm -hmm. So uh, night one, we showed up at this town, um, East East Village, Easting, 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 Easton, <laughs> uh, and it's it's just kind of a basic place. You you do a little bit of exploration. You found a burned out house with some graves nearby. Uh, you find a temple with a, was it a priest and a knight? Yeah, something like that. And um, and you, you sort of ask them about things and they tell you about this plague that's happening. Basically, there's a plague that slowly turns people into demons. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are some dwarves that are causing the problem. Yeah, it was like some brothers or something that were trying yeah. to like be all fancy and shit. Yeah, they, they decide to explore a temple, an ancient temple they probably shouldn't have and, and got mixed up in... Elemental evil. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, your first mission is to track down the the source of this plague, mm -hmm. uh, and you do that first off. You you investigate into the people who are plagued. You sort of uh, you go to this barn where they're keeping them, and they're pretty much planning on killing them pretty soon. But the people who have the plague, they're keeping them there, and that's where the first battle begins, mm -hmm. which is the session one battle where you fight in the barn against several demons. And one uh, dwarf who shows up. Yep. Uh, and then you kind of find out a little bit about him in session two after you defeat him. Mm -hmm. um, and he kind of points you towards the temple, basically, yep. that, that him and his brothers found. Mm -hmm. uh, session two, I think, was the walk to the temple. Um, it was interrogating the dude. Yes. The dwarf. Um, and yeah, we started, we went, got to a river crossing and there was like some cultists or something. Yes. That we had to kind of stop. Yeah, session two was, um, was fighting some cultists. Yeah. And was it session, session three was the dwarves? Or the uh, the dark, the night elves? Drows. Drow. Yeah. Session three was we got the drop on two mm -hmm. drow that yeah. were, had been running around. Now, session three was actually surprisingly easy. There was only two drow and a handful of creatures you had to spiders, fight. Spiders. Spiders that they controlled. And uh, it was actually a pretty easy battle overall. It was nice, you know, beat up some drow, whatever, push them around. One of the things you have to be careful about in this round, though, is like the, some of like the demons or people that have been turned could bite you. Yes, throughout the entire game, actually, yeah. so, every so often the demons show up, and if they bite or scratch you, yeah. you can become infected. Because I've been infected now. Yes, 
And Although, I didn't save last time. It so. doesn't necessarily become an issue. Because it's like every game day, or maybe it's every session. I had to save after the first session. And the first time it happened, I, I overcame it. And this time, at the end of the game day, I have to like make another save to okay. see if I am infected. So every game day, you roll to see if this infection gets worse, or if it goes away, or what happens with it. Because mm-hmm. some people do overcome it, and some people turn into demons. Mm-hmm. And some people just deal with it on the long term <laughs> they medicate you know they, they learn to live with their disease mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like herpes demon herpes the point is never fuck a demon demon herpes all right session four <laughs> session four um yeah this is excellent advice when the demons are trying to scratch and claw you don't take it as some sort of rough sex uh come on just saying <laughs> we finally got to the, like, where this, it's called the Sunset Shrine. Yes. Yes, we get to the um, exterior of the shrine and we can see the door. Mm-hmm. And it's down some steps. And we are ambushed by something. Like, elemental creatures? Yeah, like some earth elementals and then like the wind dude. Yes, like that's right. Spinny dude. There's a zephyr or two. Yep, and a, like, dust ele- dust demon or something like yes. that. Yes. And this is the first time that we have to fight anything elemental. Mm. So... So basically, you're you're kind of, it's it's where the element that you chose starts to come into play because of course, everything nothing's ever healed by an element in this version of Dungeons and Dragons. It's my understanding in previous versions, like if you hit a fire elemental with fire, he'd be like, "Thank you, I feel great. That's very nice and refreshing." Yeah, it's more like they like can dodge it yeah. or it just doesn't do as much damage. They just have something. a greater resistance. Which with my genasi and. In the elementalist, I was able to like spread out my elements among my powers. Yeah, yeah. Every uh, every elementalist sorcerer actually has a resistance to whatever their element is. Mm-hmm. So, for instance, I'm fire. So when a fire elemental hits me, it does considerably less damage than it does to anybody else. Yeah. Um, and and creatures have the same effect. So a fire elemental will still be hurt by fire, just to a lesser degree. Mm-hmm. And as a genasi, I could take the um, it was like an elementalist. Feet or something. Resistance mm-hmm. feet. That's right, yes. Uh, Genasi have the the nice ability of being able to take a feat where they become resistant across the board to all elements. Well, most of them. Most of them? I thought it was Cold, all... thunder, and fire, I think, are mine. Okay. So some of the most destructive ones. Mm-hmm. And uh, what is it, like a five, six point resistance? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which, you know, resistances work, you know, every time that you're hit, you subtract the resistance from the total number of damage. So she can take a tremendous amount of damage without ever being hurt, as long as it's rolled low enough. Yep. Or even so, you know, you get hit by 15 points damage, well, instead it's 9. Yeah. Which is a lot better. Yep. Um, so yeah, this is when it first comes into play, and it didn't come into play for any of us, because most of us chose either fire or, or earth, mm-hmm. which didn't didn't become that much of an issue. So we kind of cleaned those guys up pretty rapidly, and then we got to the door, which it turned out was trapped. Which he triggered. Yes, I triggered it, which was the first night that I had, that I started to um, not jive with our rogue player. I was just going to mention that. And he has become increasingly aggressive towards me ever since. And he's a douche. And everybody else, really. He's not He's not nice to anybody. No. Um, but yeah, I guess everybody has one of those guys at their table who thinks they know everything about the game, but they're really bad at playing it. Um, yeah, and it became more and more evident in the next in the next session, uh, when we were inside. Mm-hmm. We get inside the shrine, as I recall, this is where we fight the fire elementalist. Yep, the fire dude, and there's like a couple of... Um, oh, the archers. Crafts, yeah, the archers, right. and a couple of cultists. So in this one, you have, two, dudes. you have two platforms at the back of the room with ladders leading up to them, and you have uh, two large fires. Um, and in, in the middle of that large fire is a fire elementalist who sort of zips back and forth through the fire. And I think that he controlled it a little. Oh, I don't remember. And then on top of the the platforms are two archers who are quite powerful until you're up on top of them. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, that night we had to leave early because we were both getting piercings. Okay. Yes, right there. I can't show mine. Do it. They're in a private-ish place. You got his nipples pierced. Ha ha ha. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry, I don't have my nipples pierced, so I can't be like... Yeah, people would probably like that better. <laughs> Usually people like to see ladies' boobies more than mm, men's. Mm. Uh, but anywhere. Anywhere. 
Um, so yeah, that night we fight this fire elementalist, and unfortunately there are several minions, and the rogue really became difficult this time. An asshat. But he, he, he didn't realize, like, he was really into throwing daggers, and he was really into throwing them at the big guys, even though he kept on walking right next to the minions and not attacking them. Yeah. And the thing is, you know, he I understand wanting to maximize your attacks on, on the characters that are most important, but still you have to kill every enemy if you're going to win. Mm. And that means that you have to spend a little bit of time focusing on the minions as well. Well, and by then he didn't have many hit points anyway. Well, he, he, he had plenty by then, yeah. but he kept on walking back and forth by this minion, and the problem with, with, with walking by other characters is that they get an a- attack of opportunity if you're just strutting by them, not paying any attention to them, they can slash at you. And the thing is, he's, he didn't use any of his rogue powers to move. No. So he's getting hit over and over by this minion, taking increasing damage while he's trying to attack the fire elementalist. Who in turn fires back at him. Yes. And, and our, uh, our cleric, cleric, I think, mm-hmm. some sort of healer anyway, uh, keeps on trying to keep him alive while the rest of us are trying to take out the other guys, and it just became an increasing clusterfuck, and in the end, we had to leave before it even finished. Um, and apparently, they didn't exactly survive. <laughs> Our yep. game master kind of gave them a gimme on it. Yep. Uh, just to keep the game going, because if everybody dies, it's not as much fun. Although we have had game masters whose entire goal is to make everybody die. Yep. But anyway, that was, what, session six? That was session five. Okay, session six, uh, we apparently managed to, by a miracle, kill these guys. Uh, meteorites fall on all of them. It's amazing. <laughs> Woo! Yes. Who, who would have... Bahamut must be looking out for us. Exactly. All right, session six. Um, this is Exploration of the Shrine, where we got some supplies. Yes, yeah, we look around, get some cool stuff, some money. Which apparently everybody had to check out every single room. Yeah, yeah, we were uh, we were doing a lot of exploration, which is fine in a real game, but the thing you have to keep in mind about encounters is that encounters is very limited. It's it's basically meant to, to, you know, encounters. It's meant to be played in the encounter, which is to say the battle. Mm-hmm. Uh, most of the rest of the world is not fleshed out that well. Mm-hmm. It's pretty empty. So you can be looking through these rooms and looking around and asking people questions, and most of them are going to stare at you, and most of the rooms are going to be empty. That's just how the game is designed. Yep. It's and meant to be a series of battles. Yep. And once we finally got to the place that was the Great Shrine, yes. Um, our rogue kind of got his ass handed to him, which was funny for me. <laughs> yeah, you enjoyed that. Because he was being a dick. Yeah, he, uh, he doesn't, you know, and this is the problem. I don't really want to dwell on this one guy, but the thing is, if you're going to be playing D&D, you have to be, or any role-playing game, you have to keep in mind that you're playing with other people. You know, this ain't this ain't online. It's not World of Warcraft where you can mostly ignore everybody if you really feel like it. You actually have to rely on the other people in your team in this kind of game. So you have to keep in mind to be, at the very minimum, courteous and maybe even nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Perhaps even pleasant, you might try. And if... And if you need help, don't demand it. Ask yeah. for it. Yeah. And ask nicely. Yes, ask nicely. Don't just... Say please. Yeah. Or at least, you know, just say it in a nice way instead of, hey, you want to help me? Yeah. You know, instead of more, you know, don't demand. Just just don't demand mm-hmm. in a game. So anyway, what did we fight session six? Um, the great shrine. Temple guards. Okay, guards. I don't remember this um, one very well. Yeah, it was mostly just some temple guards here. Um, session seven, I particularly remember. Uh, we had cleared out this temple, and there was a back room, a library, where we found some neat stuff. And there were two pools where there was nothing but muck. Yep. I know because I dug through both of them. And you give the altar a shove and that's when the... Yeah, and we notice this altar has a little crack, so I push it and, uh, and it Azure moves Azure Jelly. Yes, and Azure's Jelly comes pouring out of it to attack us. Which really just sounds like some kind of lubrication. It, Azure like sudden, Jelly, intimate gel. Yeah, like it should be in like some kind of like... <laughs> New from Trojan. Porn show or something on, like, you know, on the table or something. Like, yeah, I suppose, yeah. <laughs> I could, I could see Use that. Azure Jelly for all your good times. <laughs> good times? <laughs> <laughs> well, not just sex, I guess. I suppose. Masturbation? I guess, but I mean, it's still sexual activity. It's not like you're using Azure Jelly on your toast. <zur- <laughs> azure Jelly is not a real sex product that I'm aware of. 
It's an awesome name. Anyway. Right, giant azure jelly. And te- tentacles. And tentacles uh, came, came up out of the pool. Out of the dirty pools. Mm-hmm. So the tentacles were actually pretty easy because you just had to avoid them. Because they only had limited Although they try and, like, grab you and, like, drag you into the pool. And yeah. you had to, like, get out fast or else they could, like, freeze you or something Yeah, like as that. long as you were within five squares of the pools, they could grab you and pull you in. Yep. Um, but the gel was particularly difficult because when he got close to you, he did cold damage. Mm-hmm. I, I assume as he mucked all over you. <laughs> cold. cold. Now, luckily for me, I had cold immunity, so. Yeah. So, you, so, yeah. And the rest of us, I just stayed far away. I think you did better taking out the tentacles. I did, yeah. I did some good damage to the tentacles because I have some nice effects that can hit multiple characters. And then we all ended up focusing on the gel. Yep. Now the downside of that was that we didn't really find out that he that he did the cold damage until after he started doing it. Mm. And which for me it wasn't a big deal. But. Yeah, not for you. I took a little bit of damage. The rogue took a good deal because he had already used up all of his healing surges. Oh, and he was an idiot. Yeah, he just not the best tactics. But unfortunately, our other two characters, another elementalist and our healer, uh, didn't get there till late. But when they did, they pretty much saved... just in time. Yes, they pretty much saved our asses. Yeah, they come to save the day. More or less, yeah. Cause and that, they look fabulous. Most of these battles you can probably <laughs> do with that three... Joke. Keep uh, going. Okay. Most of these battles you can probably do with three characters, but some of them have particularly difficult enemies that you need a full five mm-hmm. to really do it properly. Or at the very least, a healer somewhere. Yep. Um, so Although, yeah. I have gotten better. I've learned to stay out of range. Yeah, that's one thing that, that spellcasters need to learn. Uh, stay away from the action. Yes. You have a lot of range, mm-hmm. and you should make use of it. Mm-hmm. Stay at the absolute, stay at the maximum of that range, because mm-hmm. you don't take a penalty for maximum range. You can be 10, you know, whether you're standing on top of somebody or as whether you're... As long as you have line of sight. Yes, exactly. If you're standing on top of someone or if you're at the absolute limit of your range, it's the same role for you. Yeah. So it's it's worth it to stay far away. Unless you're fighting an archer, then get up in his grill because it'll be harder for him to shoot you. Mm-hmm. But anyway, that's, you know, that's tactics. Yeah. So we defeat the gel and we... I got de- a fancy rod. That's right. You got a rod, which is an implement weapon, which makes your attack slightly more powerful. Mm-hmm. It's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Basically, whenever she does an attack, now she holds up the rod. Yep. And blasts people yeah, through it. Yeah, I can it. Use, use it with my elemental bolt and everything like that. So yes. it's... It's a little stronger. It's, you know, it's, it's Merlin's staff. It's Gandalf's staff. Fancy piece of wood. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's, it's Harry Potter's wand. Burzap. Anyway. Moving we'll on. <laughs> Session 8. Session 8. Yeah, that sounds like a porn. Harry Potter's wand. It's probably a porn somewhere. It probably is. I kind of hope it is. Or what's a... Potter. What's something that rhymes with Potter that sounds like sexual? Harry Baller? Harry Cocker? Anyway. Okay, anyway. Session 8. We, uh, we get, we, after we've defeated this gel, we find that there are steps leading down underneath mm-hmm. the altar. Yep. And we head on in. Yep, and there's, we find four hallways. Yes. Each marked with, like, a distorted yeah. elemental it's symbol. Sort of, it's sort of, if anybody out there has ever played um, the Legacy of Kane series, it's the glyphs that are always above doors, basically. Mm-hmm. Sort of a thing scratched into the, uh, mm-hmm. into the uh, masonry. Which you found out the distorted elemental symbols are supposed to, like... It's more, it's not so much the element as it is the negative aspects of the element. Yeah. So each of us chose a hallway. Uh, I chose fire. As did the rogue. No, you chose air. Oh, that's I chose right. Fire. I chose air. You chose fire. Yeah. So in the air room, it was actually very interesting. It's um, sort of like if you ever see an Asian movie where people are hopping on on sticks. Lotus poles. Lotus poles. Uh, yeah, like in, you know, in the martial arts movie, guys are training by hopping on these tall poles. Yep. Uh, we had to get through there while this breeze whipped us around, and both of us failed. Yep. So we ended up getting whipped around and like smashed into the walls, and you lose a healing surge by the time you get to the end of the hallway. And yours was walking on hot coals. Yeah, walking on like enchanted coals or something that like it. You had to roll like a really high for it, and so yeah. I ended up having essentially losing a healing surge too by burning your feet. By burning my feet. Yes, uh, which thankfully we're not larping, so we didn't have to do any of this in real life. Which walking on hot coals is not all that hard. So you claim. There's science behind it. Science. I promise. Science! Actually, in a normal fire walking situation, hot coal situation, 
the ash on the outside of the coals insulates it. So as long as you walk steadily and don't dig your toes in, it won't burn you. Science. There you go. Thank now everybody you. knows. Yeah, thank you, Bill Nye. You're welcome. We love Bill Nye. <laughs> All right. So, uh, don't mock him. We get through that and we end up in this room that has multiple entrances, basically one for each tunnel you could yep. have taken. And it, it's like a reverse step pyramid, so it's kind of gradually going down, and then yes. there's like a big crystal dildo in the center. Which is really neat to imagine, it, minus the dildo portion. Well, it's, it's a black crystal, so it's like one of those giant black cock dildos that you see at the, the sex store, like, who would use that? What is that, a weapon? <laughs> it's a giant black crystal in the center. Yes. Blah, blah. So, uh, we kind of, it's an empty room, and we walk around a little bit. And you go up and finally touch, like, yeah, cause, give it a knock. Yeah. Because everybody's sort of looking at different stuff, and it's like, what are we supposed to do here? So I finally, I investigate the uh, the crystal, and these elementals show up. Yeah, along with a couple of uh, bitey demons. Yep, bitey demons, and they're the two fire em- fire earth slash earth elementals. Yeah, that's right. They were fire and earth, which meant that they got resistance to both. Mm-hmm. So I imagine that they were like walking you know, walking balls of flaming pitch or something. Fire yep. and earth, or maybe uh, maybe flaming peat. You can actually burn peat. Um, mm-hmm. The Irish have done it since eternity. Instead of using wood, which has typically been uh, a little difficult to find on those on the UK islands. They had it, but a lot of it was chopped down when agriculture took over. Yes, and and peat, uh, the wonderful substance made out of uh, rotten bog plants, makes a fantastic flammable. Yep, dry. You cut it out and then you let it dry, and then you set it out to dry. Yep, and then you can burn it. Yeah, it's it's lovely mm-hmm. that that exists. Like I don't know why people need to know this, but to here save we are. the Irish people. Also, potatoes. Uh, potatoes save the Irish people. Mm. Um, because prior to that, they grew wheat primarily. And, uh, of course, the English kept on coming in and burning it down because they were dicks for a long time. Oddly, one of the few places where the Romans could not conquer. Interesting. Also, they had a hard time with England. Mm. They never really conquered that. No, they sort of big got parts of Scotland. They that didn't too. Really conquer. Yeah, you know, they, they, they had a hard time with a lot of places. I don't think people give places enough credit for having resisted the Romans. Mm-hmm. But That's why there's had June's well. True, yes. Although there's not much of it left because for years people took it apart to build their houses. There's still large chunks of it. You can essentially walk from one side of the island to the other on it. Neato. So, oh yeah. But, uh, yeah, when potatoes showed up, they finally had something they could grow underground because, of course, potatoes are native to Amer- the Americas. South America. South America. So they got, uh, they finally had something they could grow underground that wouldn't be burned quite as easily, which really helped them improve their population. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Yay, potatoes. Yay, potatoes. The, the point of this story, the point of this entire video, if you learn nothing else, is that potatoes saved the Irish people. And they're delicious. They are, yes. If only I had a potato. 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 If only I had a potato. All right. All right. Um... Session... The first time I got bit by... Session 8. Yeah, Session 8. first time I got bit by a plague demon that I had to save afterwards was in this one. Yeah, and we've had players bitten by plague demons before, but it was actually people who didn't come back to our particular game. (laughs) So we don't really know if they got better or worse. Yes. Um, They might be... For all we know, they're playing at one of the other local uh, game stores, and they all turned into demons, and it was horrible. And I got set on fire by another player. That's right. Not yes. you for once. Yes, uh, in the previous uh, uh, season of D and D encounters, I was a fire wizard, and I frequently lit her on fire using my area attacks. And this time, I have no area attacks, so I can light no one on fire. Well, you have the one. But it's very limited. I can control it much better. Oh, and I have the one where I explode that damages everybody on the entire board. Yep. Uh, if I get hurt enough. I think I was the only one that you wouldn't have hit. <laughs> Yeah, this time around, you were the only one that I wouldn't have hit. Yep. But, um, so yeah, you got lit on fire by uh, our other fire sorcerer. Which still uh, did, like, a point of damage. Yeah, well, you have those nice resistances. Yeah. Um, um, and you got the Tome of Dawn War. I did, yeah. Now, we, we made pretty short work of the elementals, and then we just kind of cleaned up the demons, and it wasn't that tough, really. And there's, like, a pile of junk in one area that I looked at, and I think that's where the tome was. Yeah, now, we found this tome, and the problem is that we actually, the tome actually can't be used by anybody in our party. It's uh, restricted to druids only. But our game master made a call and said, okay, any magic user can use it, because magic users love tomes. Yeah. They're crazy about tomes. And I mean, They'd fuck a tome if they could. 
It it's in the game, so I mean somebody has to be able to use it more than because you don't always have druids or exactly. something. So now generally I'm the guy who druids if my awesome. character's power huh? Druids are awesome. In WoW they are. I don't know how they are in this game. <laughs> I'm usually the guy who my characters are powerful enough that I don't really like a lot of people are always vying for the magic items and I'm usually like, I don't really need that, you can have it. Mm-hmm. But this time around everybody already had something, so I got the the tome. Which slightly increases the power of my spells. Yep. Which is great, because I can already do 36 points of damage if I crit. I think you can do 20-something. Yeah, I think this bumps me up to like 38 or something. I think you can do like 28 or 27 points mm. of damage. Very nice. So yeah, we found the Tome of the Dawn War. And then we were on to Session 9. Yep, and we um, one of our characters got sucked into the crystal early. Yes, that's right. One of our characters, uh, there were two openings in the in the crystal where or portals, I guess, where the elementals had come out. Yep, and the demons, I'd suppose. Yep. I mean, he didn't really specifically say that's where they came from, but I'm guessing they didn't just materialize. Yes. So um, one of our our uh, our fire element, our fire our other fire elementalist. Uh, walked into the the crystal early because he assumed that it would shoot him out in the portal on the other side. Uh, it turns out both portals lead to inside the crystal. Yep. So he was stuck for about half the battle. And in the end, we wound up going in yeah, there too. We all went in, and it took us to to session nine, which was our latest session. Yep. Which was we all found ourselves back in Easting, oddly enough. Which is, but it was like a weird. Yeah. Messed up version version of Easting. Yeah, everything's sort of dark and cloudy, and we go into the... We, we investigate the burnt-out house again, except this time there are corpses laying in it. Instead of outside. Instead of graves outside, and we go... We actually ended up burying them, because it took us quite a while to figure out what we were supposed to do. So we buried them as an attempt to do to get somewhere. And uh, we ended up going... We went to the temple again, which uh, had... What was it? A, a demon statue with ravens out front? With demons, like, around it and had, like, a black crystal in its hand. Yeah. And when we finally got back outside, it just, like, turned to ash and disappeared. Yeah, so what we do, which turned out to be a big bunch of nothing, um, the other fire elementalist grabs the crystal and sticks it in this opening inside the temple, which just makes it grow bigger, and then nothing happens. <laughs> so we leave the temple, and it, it completely turns into ash, and there's it, nothing left there. It was, like, a random shrine that we checked out and stuff, but then we made it, finally got back to the barn. Yeah. After yeah. burying the people. Yeah, we wandered around this place for a while, not really finding anything, and in the end our game master kind of had to lead us <laughs> to where we were going. But um, we ended up at the barn again, uh, where we had fought the demons on the first mission. Yep. And what was in there? Oh, demons um, again. Demons and minions. Yes, we fought more demons. Uh, and once we had defeated them, we were finally released from the crystal. Yeah, because it was like some things... What I write? Because I, I had to look it up. Got my nose in the cheek. Too much coke. Ah. Too much crack cocaine. Ah, that'll get me through. It was like something's like we we're in something's mind or something, or it was like playing using yeah. its mind to like make us think we were here and stuff. So. Yeah, it was all a trick. We were actually being tested by I can only assume the demon lord. Mm-hmm. Um, but when we when we finally got out, um, we found ourselves in a room. With another dwarf, uh, shouting something. Yeah, and that was that was the end of the session. Yep. And tonight's session will start up again, I assume, with us dealing with this last dwarf. Yep. And there are only two more sessions left, so y'all can expect at least one more video a little bit later. Well, exactly one more video a little bit later, <laughs> um, talking about how it all wound up. Yep. How it all wrapped up in the end. And how many more Kit Kats the guys had to buy me for setting me on fire. Yeah, well, I, I buy you Kit Kat every night just because you ask. <laughs> but Brian bought, bought me one last game, too. That was very nice of him. me on fire. <laughs> yes. Yeah. As, a, as, a, as apologies for setting her on fire, because yep. she's the one we always set on fire. Mm. Uh, we have to buy her Kit Kats. I think it's a good... <laughs> it works, yes. Which, you know, saves me from having to buy, you, buy us Kit Kats. Because, yeah, last time it's like I'm sitting there eating two Kit Kats because you got one for Brian. Yeah. I probably should have just saved the second one for later, but mm. I'm not that kind of guy. Yep. You put food in front of me, I'm going to eat all of it. Mm. Like a dog. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll uh, we'll do one more video about this session, and then we'll do an intro video talking about what the next session is going to be. And we hope to see some of you at game stores if you're a local, or, uh, or go on ahead and, and uh, check out local game stores. Um, in your neighborhood, the, pretty much any neighborhood, you should be able to find a store that's running this. 
and it's no charge. You just walk in. Uh, you don't even have to make your own character. They can just give you a pre-rolled one. Has all the information you need, and you can start playing D and D. Yep. It's pretty easy. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. Thank you for agreeing. <laughs> You're welcome. Um. So yeah, uh, it, locally, uh, the, the the biggest stores will be Fantasy Flight Games uh, in Roseville, Minnesota, and the Source are located a uh, different location in Roseville, Minnesota. It's now next to the Eric's Bike Shop on Snelling. They recently moved to a larger location. But uh, there are other places locally, and uh, wherever you are, I'm sure that there's some place, uh, and it's just a nice way to spend two to three hours on a Wednesday night. You can Google D and D encounters. Yes, and their and website will, will tell you all about it. Uh, mm -hmm. And they also have a handy dandy search engine to help you find places that are doing it near you. Yep. And you can just call ahead, find out what time they do it. Usually, it's someplace between six and seven that the, most stores will start. Mm -hmm. And uh, and you can give it a try. It's a good way to spend a Wednesday night. Yes, and there's no obligation whatsoever. You know, you can show up for the first night and then leave and never come back. You can show up in the middle. And they'll give you a character to play. There's 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 absolutely nothing to it really. Yep. So, uh, for Random Tandem, this is Tom. And Brandy. And uh, we hope to see you gaming. Bye.